Hello everyone and welcome back to the Making a Pong clone series. This is Jonathan here and in this video we are going to look at resetting the ball once either the player or the computer scores a point. So to do this you're going to have to start by opening up your ball script. So go ahead and open up your ball, your ball script. Now one thing I want to just change here right off the bat uh, just to follow up in the last video is this public float ball position Y. I'll make it a bit bigger. So if we look here in our uh, script for the ball, we can see that we can modify that. And we really don't want to be able to modify it, but we have it set to public because we're accessing it from the paddle script as well. So what we can do here is we can go before it and type open square bracket, hide an inspector, and then close square bracket. And now if we save that and go back into Unity, we should see that uh, once it updates, you, you can no longer modify it in here. So that's just a quick fix. Now, how are we going to reset the ball? Well, we already know that the ball scores a point on the on enter trigger 2D function. So what we can do here is we can create another method that we haven't actually created yet and call this reset ball. And now we're going to go down here and actually create this. And we're going to go void reset ball and make our brackets. And what we're just going to do here is open up and type transform.position, which is the transform.position of our ball, equals a new vector 2. And in this, we can just type 0 on the x coordinate and 0 on the y coordinate and semicolon. And now if we go into Unity and test this out, and actually I can, now that we know where the ball is supposed to start, I can just move the X position to default at zero, which is right on the dotted line. And if I hit Control Save and start this up, we can try it out. And uh, if we let it uh, score a point, let's let it score a point here on our player. Uh, we can see it just perfect. That's it, it resets just as it's supposed to. Now, as you can see, there's an, uh, is a problem though. Uh, it's not actually changing its initial velocity. So right now it's just uh, continuing where it left off and it's actually picking up more and more speed, which isn't what we want. And right now we're also gonna see another problem. It's gonna start going so fast that watch what's about to happen. Uh, it's probably gonna go right through either the roof or the floor. There it goes. Uh, and that's just because uh, the colliders aren't big enough to handle it going at that speed. But that shouldn't really be a problem because it's not typically going to be going at that speed. Although it could, so it, it's not necessarily a bad idea to uh, make sure that colliders are big enough to handle uh, that condition. So if you make it a little bigger, that way if it does end up going faster, it's just going to increase the chances that it doesn't uh, go through the level, which we would call a an unfortunate glitch. So I'm just going to widen all of these just to account for that unlikely possibility. And I could probably make, even make these wider. It really doesn't make any difference because they're invisible, but there we have it. Okay, uh, so now let's go back into our script and handle this other portion. Well, we already know that we have a method here that starts the ball moving at the start of the game. It's called void move ball, uh, very aptly named. So really all we have to do to uh, handle this is say, move ball and this way once the ball resets we're going to reset its initial velocity that it's being given and if we hit control s again and hit play one more time we can test that out and uh, we can see what happens if we uh, get it going here and we let ourselves score i want to score a point okay well, there we go. Yeah, so it, we can see, quite clearly see that the speed reset uh, and it is a ball that is just uh, resetting and it's going and uh, because of the way we have this all set up, we don't even have to modify anything to do with the scorekeeper. We can just see that uh, when a point gets scored, uh, it updates on both sides. So that's pretty cool. Okay, so really, it's, it was a very quick fix for this video. So I'm going to make the rest of this a challenge for you guys. So I want you to make it so that the move ball method uh, can launch itself to either the player or the computer. So at the start of the game, try to do this so it has a 50-50 chance of going to either player first or the player or the computer. But then according to the official Pong rules, which I tested out prior to making this video, upon the ball resetting, it should launch towards whichever player gained the last point. 
So if the computer scored the last point, it should launch towards the computer. And if the player scored the last point, it should launch towards the player. So pause the video and give that a go. Okay, welcome back. How did you do? Let's take a look at uh, what my solution will be. So I'm going to go back up here over to the move ball method. And we are going to take a look here at initializing this ball. So first of all, we, we know we don't have to worry about the Y. This is basically just uh, the X value. And if we look at our force X value, uh, force X is being given an initial value of five. So really what we want to do is have give it a chance of initializing at either uh, 5f or negative 5f at the start of the game. So basically what we can do is we can uh, put this within an if statement. We can say, uh, oh, we'll create uh, int roll equals random dot range between zero and two. And remember that is actually between zero and one. This is just because of the way unity works. And now we can say if roll equals zero, will force x will be equal to five. And else ah, squiggly bracket, that's the one I want. Force x will be equal to negative 5f. And that will just initialize it here at the start of the game, either to go left or right. And I shouldn't really have to change anything else. Uh, however, what, uh, what we will have to change is uh, figuring out whether it's going to go back towards the player or the computer afterwards. So for, to do this, I'm going to go up here and I'm going to create a private Boolean. And I'm going to call this uh, towards player. Maybe not the best name, but it's just what's coming to, it's what's coming into my mind at the, the very start here. And we can now go here and figure out uh, whether or not to make this true or false. So when we reset the ball, uh, right, rather before the one before then. Uh, the best place to figure this out would be uh, towards here where we're actually figuring out who's scoring. So if we're increasing the player score, uh, that means the player scored and it should go towards the player. So we want to make sure that uh, towards player is equal to true in this case. And under this case here, towards player would be equal to false. So now, basically what we can do is go into reset or into the move ball and we can say if towards player is equal to true we can just go ahead and do it like this and we can say else body dot velocity is equal to new vector to negative force x and force y. And I just realized that uh, because I'm setting the initial velocity, this really isn't going to make much sense here. So what we can do instead, uh, instead of changing force x up here, we can just actually initialize it right here. So we basically what I want to do is always make sure force x is equal to uh, 5. Force x equals 5. But now, instead of changing force x's value, we're just going to actually change that uh, towards player variable. And it really doesn't matter which way we do it here. I'm going to put it for false under one condition and towards player equals true under the other condition. So just going to randomize that Boolean rather than the actual value of force x. That seems like a more logical solution. So let's hit control save and give that a try and see if that works just as intended. starting the game, 50-50 uh, chance it was going to go to me anyway, so kind of hard to test out, but let's uh, let's check this out here. We want to make sure that uh, if I score a point, it should go towards me next, 
And if the computer scores a point, it should go towards the computer next. Okay, computer scored and went towards the computer. Great. So we know that part is working. And now I just have to score a point against the computer to make sure that's working too. Looks like I'm going to have a chance right here. Great, and it's going towards me as well. And we'll just uh, initialize it one more time just to see if it, we can get to go towards the computer. There we go. Okay, so it was just I just got to unlucky on those rules for testing, but uh, it is working. It is uh, launching, resetting, and going towards the appropriate player at the appropriate times. That is all for this video. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any comments or questions.